What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. I'm your host, Omar, Senior Cultural Partners of Strategies for Finish Line and JD. Today, we got two special guests, Seth and Callie Curry. How y'all doing? Hey, what's going on? How you doing? What's up? What's up? Super lucky and super happy and happy, guys. So I'm ready to get right into it. So, you know, philanthropy has been a part of you guys' lives for like, you know, a very long time, especially with sports. So speak to us about how you got into it and how invested you are into serving the community. Yeah, uh, for me personally, um, I mean, just growing up uh, around the league and with my father, I just watching how he uh, carried himself around the community of Charlotte, playing there for 10 years. He was big in the community. So uh, as a kid, I thought when I grew up, I wanted to do the same stuff, try to get back to the community and, 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 and do stuff for Star Mom Foundation. Um, and once I made it to the league, I was able to do that. So, I mean, like I said, I had a good example of my pops and um, he kind of led the way and I'm trying to do my part as well to, to help the communities that I play in. Uh, yeah. Even though it's been hard, it's been several over the, over the past few years. Cool. Yeah, I mean, Seth and I weirdly have a, a, a similar experience growing up. Um, and I think both of my parents, um, kind of instilled in us all, me and my brothers, that it's super important to give back to the community community that you play for and the community that you're from. Um, I remember when I was little, just having to do things that I didn't want to do when I was younger. And now that I'm older, I really appreciate that I did those things. And it makes me very grateful and recognizing the privilege that Seth and I are in the position now. And and wanting to give back to to the community that that we're in and having um, real impact. Um, I also want to shout out both of our moms since I know uh, both of our pops get a ton of credit, but my mom is easily the most giving person that I've ever met in my life. Um, I think Seth can attest to that too. Uh, And I think that's who she is to her core. So I think I have a little bit of that in me and that also inspires inspires me to do this. And, and Seth's mom actually started a school in Charlotte. So um, oh, wow. I know that giving back in education is super important to her as well. Cool, yeah, shout out to moms, uh, shout out to Dell and Doc. So that's a nice segue into this next question as far as, you know, both you guys growing up around sports and athletes and seeing, you know, especially when that, that second contract kicks in, it's a lot more money. So now you have like, you know, a lot more uh, resources to start, you know, foundations and give them back so what would you say is the the impact of growing, growing up around athletes who are also giving back at a young age and so you know what you're doing now yeah I mean it makes you want to do the same I mean you don't want to be one of those guys that just uh I mean like you said come into money all and just take take advantage just take 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 you want to give back I mean you get a, with the with the more established you get in the league the more opportunity you have to change people's lives more people you have the uh, chance to meet and um, you just get more and you want you don't want to leave a mark outside of the game uh, just be more than just a basketball player so um, I mean what better way to do that than, than have a foundation and and, and try to um, influence younger kids uh, like I said you try to help them with stuff uh, as far as athletics and stuff like that but um, you want to give them an example of, of other things outside of sports as far as uh, helping them uh, learn as much as possible for sure yeah I think that playing sports um, allows you to interact with all different types of people from different walks of life and it kind of makes you appreciate um, where you are and, and and it helps you learn about other people and what other struggles there are and I think that um, makes you want to help other people um, and I think that the way that Seth and I both grew up having those um, relationships with people from all over um, in different walks of life helped us and, and keeps you grounded. Um, I, I also think that in sports in general, there is a culture of giving back, um, especially where I'm seated in um, the foundation or seated in the foundation at, at CAA. Um, and we work with across all entertainment verticals. Our sports department is some of the heaviest philanthropists. Um, And and it's interesting because a lot of athletes take care of themselves, their families, and their communities. And I think 
a lot of guys take that responsibility on and are super proud of it. And it's inspiring and, and whether they like it or not, they're role models. So, um, I hope that by, by doing that, they're inspiring kids that do things outside of athletics. Cause obviously only, I don't even know what it is. 1% of athletes in high school make it. So mm-hmm. hopefully they're inspiring other athletes, but beyond that and, and kids that are doing things in other, in other areas. For sure. So, you know, with community voices, we had like all types of guests speak on, you know, several topics such as education, you know, nutrition, equality and things of that nature. So what are some of the things your foundation staff focuses on as a whole? Or what's the like, what's the foundation's mission? Yeah, we try to um, focus on just the, the giving kids um, sound financial, like education outside of their regular uh, academic uh, curriculums, I would say. So, okay. um, I mean, we've done the basics of obviously um, refurbishing basketball courts and and things like that in the in the underprivileged communities. But um, outside of that, like I said, we try to team with uh, people like Everfy and 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 put different classes and curriculum and, and things like that um, into these schools where kids can learn about starting their own business, um, taxes, and mm-hmm. just other real life uh, situations that they're gonna come across. Like I said, you don't learn in your your regular uh, classroom these days. So um, try to think outside the box a little bit and try to serve these kids in, in different ways. No, definitely. Because even for me, like growing up and as an adult now, I always wonder why we didn't learn about taxes and like balancing yeah. the textbook. But we like in math class learning about like Pythagorean theorem. Exactly. Like, I haven't exactly. seen since high school, you know what I mean? So Where, exactly. Like we did, we did got a, um, it's a, it's a program called an entrepreneur uh, development program where they learn about, like you said, learn about starting their own business, coming up with a, like a fake idea, starting their own business, having to deal with taxes, having to deal with uh, raising money. And like I said, it's, it's stuff that they, if they want, if they have a good idea or, or want to start a business later on in life, that's that's kind of where they they spark that interest for them and, and where they learned about it for the first time. So it's, it's honestly stuff I wish I would have learned at a younger age because right. A lot of that stuff I didn't learn until I got to college. Or even after college. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of stuff where I'm like, how is this not taught in school? Yeah. Um, so I know that's what that that's what we focus on with, with our foundation. Um, and for for me personally and with work, um, I think racial equity and civic engagement are like the two areas that I'm most passionate about. Cool. And then the question for you, Callie. So, you know, shout out to CAA. Um, and you played an integral role in helping people go out and vote this year. And I believe it's like, like the most votes ever for like a presidential candidate. So speak to that process and, you know, the work you've done in that space to make so many people come out. Um, yeah, two women in my department, which is the foundation department at CAA, um, started this, um, org with a few other women across agencies and kind of other uh, entertainment organizations called I'm a Voter. They started mm-hmm. it four years ago um, and have built it up and it's huge now. Um, we registered an enormous amount of voters for this election um, and then got out the vote. Um, but I think we start like it became a priority four years ago. Um, for whatever reason you guys want to come to that conclusion of what happened four years ago. Um, But we wanted as many people um, exercising their right to vote. And this was the most votes for any presidential candidate in Biden. But overall, this was the most amount of people ever voting in an election period from both parties. Um, So that is super inspiring. And we were really, really happy um, with the amount of people that we got to vote. And I just think it is so important. I think people uh, tend to complain about how things are. And I I believe the only way that we can change things um, and sure things have changed slowly, but we have made huge steps from where we originally were. um, And I'm hoping hoping that things continue to change. And the, the, the number one way that you're able to change things is by voting. And I think voting locally is just as important as the, the national election. Um, and voting locally, you'll see differences or changes quicker. 
Um, so I hope people continue to do that and don't just think that like we voted this election and now things are over, um, they've actually just begun. Um, and speaking of, there's a big election coming up in Georgia, there's a runoff and the results of that runoff will determine who has control in the Senate. So um, there's still work to be done um, in 2020, 2021. Definitely, work doesn't stop. And I feel like with this election year, people are more invested in just understanding who they were voting for and what comes with that. And yeah, that goes to show people, you know, when people want change, you know, whatever caused the change or caused people to go out and vote, you know, they definitely will. So kudos to you and your team at CA for the work you've been doing and encouraging people to, you know, actively vote and yeah. And yeah, last actually so, partnered, oh, sorry, I was gonna say- No, 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 do your thing, do your thing. I'm a voter actually partnered with every um, major sports league. So um, yeah. it seems like leagues were behind uh, voter reg as well. So it was kind of cool to see that. Nice. Cool. And then lastly for Seth, Seth, your foundation, right? So it's been doing a lot of work in the Dallas community. So now that you're going to Philly, what comes with that? And how would you affect the Philadelphia community? Yeah, it's definitely a goal of mine as I get more uh, acclimated with the city and get to know the people around here and and the Philadelphia organization to try to do the same stuff I've done in the past as far as when I went to Portland, um, play refurbished a couple of uh, 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 local basketball courts and also put that program in a, in a few schools out there in Portland. Did the same thing in Sacramento and in, in Dallas. So, I mean, nothing really changed. Just trying to figure out the best way to uh, impact the community that I play in and and I mean, I figured out as we go, like I've just been here not even a week yet. So <laughs> it's hard to, to tell you the exact, the exact ways I'm gonna put it into play, but um, it's, it's definitely gonna happen and hopefully uh, bigger and better than before. So um, looking forward to it. City of brotherly love. And then how did the exactly. foundation come into fruition? Yeah, like I said, I always wanted to, to do it as a kid. But mm -hmm. when I got to the league, I was at first, my first few years, I was just so locked into sticking in the league and. Yeah. and make it out I, I mean i wasn't really focused on the extracurriculars but i mean once i finally got established and um was able to uh raise some money uh me and one of my business partners were able to start it and put it together and really make a difference in sacramento for the first time and yeah. kind of just took off from there cool shout out to your business partner <laughs> yes sir <laughs> cool i mean uh that's all the questions i got for you uh Definitely love the work you guys are doing between CA and your own personal foundations. Um, you know, us at JD Sports, the finish line. Love you guys. I love partnering with you guys as well. So we're gonna make a nice donation. So I'm gonna pull out the checkbook. I like it. Appreciate it. Donation of 15,000. That looks good, man. And, Thank you. Man. You know, we know it's not going to great news between Dallas and now, you know, Philadelphia. And, you know, it's going to go a long way, especially for the kids, man. You know, yeah. You know, you know, knowledge is one thing you get and you just don't lose it, so. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate that. Like I said, I mean, like, that's, it goes a long way in helping the, the different areas of the community. And it's just a matter of the, the different foundations putting that in the right place. So I'm going to try yeah. to do the best. Cool. And yeah, Thank that's you. I Say that again, son. Oh, I was just saying thank you. That's going to go a long way and, you know, help us get rooted in Philly and into the community and figure out, you know, where we want to get involved. Cool, cool. Yeah, you know, it's the least we could do, especially Philadelphia. They definitely need it, especially the inner city kids. So I'm looking forward to working and doing. And yeah, I mean, I'll let you guys close it out with any closing remarks because that's all I got. You know, I, I made the donation, show the check. I see the smile, so we all good. <laughs> You got anything else to throw? No, I would just say thank you so much for, thank you so much to Finish Line for your support. And uh, to anyone watching this, I think that you can make an impact if you want to, no matter what you're doing in your life. So if you can, you should. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, for me, basically, I, if you want to make a difference in the community, you can do it at any level. Um, obviously, there's bigger foundations out there than mine, but mine's a small one we do. Uh, as much as we can. And like I said, that 15K at our foundation goes a long way. So um, we appreciate it once again. Yeah. And I feel like even with small uh, foundations, they're able to affect 
people in a more personal way versus like the big ones and you know get spread yeah. out. And you don't really get that, you know, that true one on one feeling. So I'm exactly. sure it'll be appreciated either way. Yep, yep, yep. Cool, well, that's a wrap. Thank you guys again. And thank you everyone else for tuning into this episode of Community Voices. We'll see you next week.